Well, well I mean, it's, it's not your it's not your decision of where I walk to if I don't go in a restricted route. No, actually, sir, it is my decision because it is posted out there. Oh, uh, it's posted. The meeting rooms. If you come in time in. Meeting rooms and uh, office suites, I think it says. It's deemed restricted. So that way, that, that for I cannot go in any restricted area. But if it's, but if it's, okay, well, your, your, well, your employee here seems to have a problem with me walking down a hallway. Wanna speak up now? Hi, Todd. I informed him that um, together. Okay, but I whoever you are. Him that since he said he's a member of the media, I'd be happy to help him with whatever stories. I, I'm just asking why you're taking pictures of them. But I mean, if you're going to engage me, you can't give me your badge number like your policy okay. states. Why of what crime? Okay. Of what crime? I'm on a game suspicion I'm of on what crime? You're avoiding that question because you know you're going to dug yourself Reasonable in the hole. Reasonable suspicion. Of what crime? Not normal for somebody. Are you a law up? enforcement or a normal enforcement? I'm going to ask you to leave. And if you refuse to do that, then we'll take it up from the stuff from here. And why, we'll why would why would you stop me from recording? Because there's no need for you to be out here. Have you ever felt powerless when someone did something to you or took something from you and there was nothing you could do? This is the feeling many citizens experience while simply exercising their legal right to record, only to face overreaching actions from law enforcement officers. Knowing your rights and then watching them openly violated, it feels like losing your voice in a space where you should be respected. Join us in today's video where we share moments of citizens courageously standing up for their rights and facing shocking responses from those who are supposed to protect us. First Amendment Audit you need ID to access public buildings. ID? I don't have it with me. I don't. I didn't know I needed one uh, in a yeah. public building. Yeah, I'm sorry you need an ID with a public building, especially one that would have children in it like a school. At the Forsyth County Board of Education, a citizen visited and recorded public areas inside the building, exercising their First Amendment rights to free speech and information. However, upon arrival, they were stopped by Supervisor Jennifer, who required ID or a driver's license. Let's see how this supervisor justifies policies that seem to infringe on citizens' rights in this situation. Yes. Are you here for me? I am. I'm Jennifer. Hey. Well, okay. let, me, let me change hands. Okay. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> Wanting to look around the building and see what you guys do here and all that good stuff. Okay. Do you have an... I didn't know I needed one uh, in a public building. Yeah, I'm sorry. You need an ID with a public building, especially one that would have children in it like a school. Okay. I don't think I need a ID in a public building, but... Okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to walk around and, yeah. and you know, no, uh, kind of walk around, see what y'all do here. Okay. Well, just for safety reasons, we do check-ins for our building, uh -huh. and so you don't have an ID. I don't have my ID on me. I don't, I'm not required to, you know, take it, take it with me or anything, so. Okay. I'm not driving, so. Okay. No, I'm sorry. We can't let you in without an ID. Really? Yeah. Is there a policy or? Yeah, we actually, I don't know if you've noticed, that we do have signs that are going up that I've oh. actually approved this week. Okay, so yeah, until those signs, uh, or is there a... Talk to me about it. Okay, well, I don't have ID and it's a public building. I'm not required to uh, have ID in a public building. Well, for the um, safety... It's a public building. I mean, I'm not arguing with you. It's just, yeah. it's a public building, so... That's fine, but yeah. this is our policy, so Okay, well, the... You but, are more than welcome to roaming freely without uh, public, among the building. Public accessible areas are strictly fine. Is there a sign there? You know, hallways, public areas are completely, you know allowable under the law not policy okay. yeah so mm -hmm. that's our policy so i'm not familiar with the law that you're talking about uh -huh. i can have one of our sheriff's deputies it's a first them. it's a actually doing so okay. um you know i don't have to have a id in a public building i mean policy is doesn't trump the law but yeah somebody yeah, yeah but i can have our school resource officer come over but that's fine I just can't allow you. Okay, I'm gonna call my attorney. Would you let them in with our attorney? No, I don't. I don't need it. I just I have mine, so I'll just gotta double check, make sure that okay. that's that's fine. Um, so we are being denied access because I don't have my ID on me, which is not required if I'm not driving a vehicle. Well, I mean, it's no, you know, there's no um law that says I have to, this is a public building. So, I mean, restricted areas, I'm not going into any, you know, I'm just here 
gathering content for my story and <laughs> you're holding it up, unfortunately, but that's fine. We'll wait for him D, to enter this uh, anywhere in here, but we'll see. I mean, look at this one. Now I'm talking about the sign out here. Sweets. Okay. Under the Fourth Amendment, citizens only need to provide ID or personal information if they are lawfully detained or suspected of criminal activity. Thus, Supervisor Jennifer's demand for ID to access public areas is unreasonable and infringes upon the citizen's right to privacy and access to public information. But he's more than welcome to be in our lobby and even attend a school board meeting in the public room. And we do have that with what he can and can't do law-wise. I just know our problem. So the, the law wise is every area that's not restricted, I can be in work, working on content for a story. I'm an independent journalist mm -hmm. and I'm working on content for my story. My story is yeah, in. And, and that is every area except for this lobby and the public room. In here. Can't move like an office. Uh, and uh, if it's not restricted. Okay, well, can you okay. get a supervisor or yeah, someone? Yeah, I got Yeah, and I told him he asked for a supervisor and yeah, I, I did. said I work in this area. Yeah, and it's, it's a public building. You can't restrict access in a public building unless it's restricted. Oh, we're going to find out? Yeah, because it's a law. I mean, well, yeah. I believe that, that sign says the office suites and the meeting rooms are restricted areas. Office not... suites and meeting rooms are restricted. Yes, sir. Okay, so hallways are not restricted. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. I, it's not, whatever your policy is, but, you know, okay. I, what I'm telling you is that this is a, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm working on my story, and you're yes. restricting my story because mm -hmm. you're working on my, I'm working on my story, you restrict whatever. I don't know the reason why, but like I said, maybe we'll figure it out. Safety, as you can see right there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, this is uh, Todd Shirley, Chief Operations Officer. Uh -huh. Has given you the correct information, those suites are locked areas. It is clearly posted on the other side. You are welcome to walk around. You are welcome to walk into the public boardroom. Um, but, but you are not going in anywhere else. Okay, well, if, if hallways and if freely walk there, uh, that's, I don't care if you walk well, I mean, it's, it's not your, it's not your decision and where I walk to, if I don't go in a restricted area, then that's, yeah, it is, it's, 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 it's posted out there. Uh, oh, it's posted. The meeting other part rooms. Of that is if you come into our building, you still have to sign in. Po office suites, I think it says. It's deemed restricted. So that way, that, any restricted area, but if it's, but if it's not restricted, Okay, well you're you well you're in down a hallway. Who is my employee? I, I don't know, but you know. Want to speak up now? That um, I'm not his employee. We all work together. Okay. But I have well, informed him that since he said he never stories, he said he doesn't need my assistance. Exactly. I told him he can um, freely be in our lobby and intend a meeting. He does not have a photo ID for me to scan to allow him to have access anywhere else. And the other areas are restricted. Thank you. He asked for my supervisor, and I said, "You got it." And so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around in the public accessible areas to do, uh, what, which is well within my rights to do so, and like I said, which is well within my rights to walk around and report anything that I can see in a public accessible area. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around and you know. I will, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And what's, to I'm going to do that. And what's your name again and position with, no. okay. Thank you. So, uh, well, we're trying to handle this as nice as we can. Oh yeah, sure. No, you didn't act. It's, it's all good. I did tell you my name. I told you my name was Todd Shirley, Chief Operations Officer. Okay. You better not be rude to Jennifer Cratch. Well, I haven't been rude to, to that was exactly what I was, what I've done. Yeah, we know what you're doing. Well, it does okay. sound rude. Oh, well, I'm not, definitely not trying to be rude. I think it's all. As you can see, although allowed to proceed with their lawful rights under the Constitution, the citizen had to do so under police and staff supervision. This exposes the shortcomings of the facility's policy, resulting in undue restrictions on citizens' rights. Okay. What's, I, can't, I can't hear you, sir. Hello? 
I said follow directions of the staff, please. Directions of the staff. You're going to follow directions. I'm going to follow the law. Don't take this word, don't it, it's not going to go anywhere it needs to go. In the hallways, I don't need an escort, but if you want to, let's go. How you doing, sir? Good, Name and badge number? Officer Burns, come on. Sure, let's go. They are, because I don't have my ID with me, because I'm not driving. Stairs. Yes. Yeah, I got off the school to see. Little facilities and signs are not there. This is a. What kind of story are you doing? I am doing a story on the school board, and Miss um, Jennifer made herself a part of the story, which she should not have done, but. You know, job, well, she's not doing her job because she didn't, she demanded an ID and you don't have to have ID in a public accessible build and you don't even have to have ID walking down the street. Now I understand the video will speak for itself, Miss Jennifer. Okay. Well, I would like to make sure that I clarify on your video no. that you need to have an ID for the restriction. Well, it's not what you said in the beginning, well, but if I you can clarify definitely clarify. It, I'm sorry that I was not Before we decided to call every, no, 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 we're not arguing, we're having a conversation. I, but I clearly told her she decided to call you. Well, you which, know what goes out there, the video and stuff like that, it's like where you can and where you can, and stuff like that, so. Well, when you leave out of here, there's 50 cameras. In conclusion, this situation illustrates that basic citizen rights, such as privacy, freedom of speech, and access to public information must always be respected and protected. While security policies are necessary, they must not infringe on citizens' constitutional rights. A bully cop tries to intimidate a journalist simply because he's exercising his right to record and refuses to provide ID. What's your name and badge number? Officer Baker, what's your yeah. badge number? You, you got it right there. What's Where, your badge number? Okay, I don't have to tell you that. That is part of your policy okay. to tell me that. Okay. What's wrong, sir? Why are you coming out? Citizens have the right to film and take pictures in public places, including government buildings, as long as they do not disrupt operations. This is a form of free speech and freedom of the press, protected under the First Amendment. But when a citizen used this right to film around the Park City Police Department in Illinois, it quickly became evident that not everyone, especially the police, respects this right. Hey, John, I got, I got a dispensary. Dispensary right here by the police department. Green light dispensary. And the lady at the dispensary, she was just saying something. Something I couldn't hear. It's crazy that this is like right in the same parking lot as the Police department, man. Go inside and get some FOIA request forms. But I wonder what she was saying. I don't want to go on their property. I know that. So I'm not sure. The young lady right there. I know who she is, but she. Okay. To that lady. I just was screaming something. I'm starting to feel like they don't want me out here. I think that's what I'm, I think that's what it is. Let's go. What's going on, officer? She came in, why, why, are, you, why are you recording everything? Um, she said something? Yeah. What did she say? Hey. She's that you're taking pictures of all these cars here. Oh. There's nothing illegal about it, but you you just. Were What's your name and badge why. number, Officer Baker? What's yeah. your badge number? You, you got it right there. What's Where, your badge number? Okay, I don't have to tell you that. That is part of your policy okay. to tell me that. Okay. What's wrong, sir? Why are you coming out? I, I'm just asking why you're taking pictures of it. But I mean, if you're going to engage me, you can't give me your badge number like your policy okay. states. Six. 
Oh, man. Come on, being unprofessional. Yeah, with a suspicious. No, I don't provide ID. Okay. Minus a crime. You, how, well, here's the thing. You're acting suspiciously. Somebody's That's, somebody's report involved. So I need so some it's, identification. So suspicious uh, felony or misdemeanor? Okay, it's neither right now. So, uh, okay, then, if I'm not suspecting, you're not, you're not. exercising my First Amendment right. Okay, Are you going to right. wage war on that today, sir? I'm not looking to wage war. Somebody's saying that you've been over in Waukegan or that's correct Dunkin Donuts. that's correct I'm, I'm exercising my rights today okay. sir I understand that reported as being acting suspicious by recording it's, not, it, it's my job you're not doing anything wrong that's correct so why would I have to disclose my because somebody's reporting activity that well all you suspicious. have to do as an officer is let them know that I'm not doing anything illegal okay you're not doing anything so why didn't you convey it to him sir ask you what well, you're doing and you're not and I just told you I said I'm standing here Exercising my First Amendment right to record in public. Have a good day. You still don't want to identify yourself? No, I don't. Okay, well, I'm going to come in and file a complaint on you. Okay. Definitely, man. Directives. You have to get some ID in order to file No, them. absolutely not, man. I, you, you, you're turning out to be a tyrant, Officer Baker. Complain. Wow. All right, go ahead and ask. <laughs> don't, don't tell you the same thing. Okay, well, then, then that means they're going to hinder me from filing a complaint. File some FOIA requests on you guys as well. This is ridiculous. Officer Barker is one of the least professional officers I've encountered in audits. Not only does he restrict freedom of speech, but he even refuses to provide his name and title when interacting with a citizen. This not only violates the citizen's constitutional rights, but also goes against police department policies on public service. And that's not even mentioning the officer's confrontational attitude when the citizen asks to file a complaint over these violations. Right? Yes. Okay. Please, go ahead. paperwork to file a complaint. Yeah, and I need to speak with a, um, a, a higher authority officer as well. Someone, sergeant, lieutenant, deputy, so this officer here tried to just come in and fringe on my rights. Want to be able to make those people aware. Making your department look bad, man. Okay. Coming out, asking for ID, knowing you don't have a right to it, and I'm suspicious when all you had to do was tell him he's doing nothing wrong. I, <laughs> That's crazy. On. Okay, well, whatever, I'm going to have you fill out this. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. Uh, if you want to go ahead and have a seat, um, here's the paperwork for you to fill out. Okay. Gonna... No What's your name, ma'am? It's, it's Jones. Jones. Thanks a lot, Jones. Uh, officer of higher authority, or Officer Baker there, he comes out and be uh, getting all close. He's trying to intimidate, but we ain't intimidated. So, we'll see. Definitely. Then he talk about I need an ID. <laughs> Stop it, man. That uh, cops made me leave. Uh, Officer Baker acting all tyrannical, trying to get close. And uh, you're not getting ID, dude. No, man, catch up with your crowd. Yeah, so that was crazy, man. It was a security lady, man. When they told that young lady, that young lady walked in there. Not even it's weird, like. <laughs> Yeah, so been out here dock police vehicles and things of that nature and standing out here right back in front of this dispensary. When the cop came out here, he made me leave. It's been about 35 minutes now, so commander should be out of his meeting. So we finna go in here and see if he's ready to, if I'm uh, able to speak with him right quick. Uh, put him on notice about Officer Baker's conduct. I was puzzled by Officer Baker's behavior in the previous situation, but after watching the conversation between Commander Stoves and the citizen, I fully understood why Baker acted the way he did. As a senior officer, the commander could have handled the situation better by taking steps to train or discipline his subordinate for misconduct. Instead, he displayed indifference and a lack of professionalism toward the citizen's valid complaint, creating a significant barrier to ensuring fair and safe enforcement of rights. Are you guys one of the supervisors? Oh, yeah. What's up? Are you the commander, sir? And uh, the situation was uh, standing right over here in the parking lot there, right here on the, on the other side of you guys. There you go. And I was just recording, and I noticed I see a dispensary is connected to you guys' lot, and that's something I've never seen. And obviously, two young ladies from over there didn't like that. Uh, so they came and got one of you guys, Officer Baker, it is, yeah. cord, and 
Uh, he tried to ID me. And we, obviously, of course, he was unsuccessful. But still, though, to even try to come in, we, we shouldn't have that. Uh, it's made the department look terrible. Okay. That you no know, opinion on his conduct. Sounds to me like somebody called. So he got dispatched for suspicion. How is it suspicious, sir? You 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 saying that it's suspicious as well? Well, I'm saying you use the word suspicious as well. Okay, so uh, from your own from your own uh, um, your own opinion, do that sound suspicious? Oh, well, I'm like, well, right, right. Well, I mean, some like I said, I always use this analogy. Some people put peanut butter on pancakes. Exactly. So he shouldn't have even came out and engaged me. Um, he had to because he was dispatched to it. So. Well, the young lady, she didn't call. There was a dispatch call of somebody that was out there with went to go see what was going on. Really? That's that just just that just don't sound right. And then if, I mean, even if somebody is out here recording, all he had to do is just say, you know what? He's not doing anything illegal. That's his first amendment right. Leave him alone. Why? Why don't you officers ever do that? Well, we've got a duty to respond to what the people call about. I mean, I've seen calls get shut. No, I've... Actually, he got shut down once he figured out what was going on. No, he still, well, once I told him, he still kind of persisted. He tried to intimidate a little bit, me ID. And I said, I want to fill out a complaint. He said, I need an ID to do that. Well, Didn't want to identify himself. I'm just saying, man, I don't, you know, this doesn't, this, he needs to be retrained, uh, uh, Commander, you're commander, right? Deputy Chiefs at this location. I am the second in command, yes. Second in command, okay. Okay, I know you guys see guys. I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna be hanging around a little bit, man. I don't want them to think that you guys kicked me out of here, so I'm gonna film a couple of you guys as, um, it makes you, feel you know, squad cars. I'll get some footage as well. Uh, All right. We'll go from there. Enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. Just try to give him a heads up, man. Give Officer Baker, let him know to, not to be tyrannical, man. It's we the people. Oh yeah, uh, even even that uh, commander guy, he he seems like a tyrant. So, did you want to fill it out here, or you want to take it with you? Uh, yeah, I'll fill it out right here, and then. Okay, okay, All righty, and again, the the chief is not. That's the commander, right? Yes, the holder bomb. Is is so? Is he available now? Uh, he is not. Well, I have not. He's here, but he's not here. I don't. How's it going? This guy. <laughs> okay, appreciate it, uh, Jones. No problem. Thanks a lot. Let's complain for him out right quick and turn it back in. Yeah. Well, I'm sure your cannabis place probably were concerned because somebody's just hanging around the lot recording things. They're probably thinking in the back of their mind robberies. You know, regardless whether it's factual, regardless, you record me all day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, of course. I mean, some officers don't have any, you know, don't feel anything about it. Just feel intimidated by it. Just, by a camera, though. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Dialogue with me, Chief, about the situation. I wanted to put you guys. Oh, this is you here, Walter Holdenbaum. Yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so once you can I record, you can record all day long. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know that, of course. So much Police department here, man. It's like if you if you riding past it, if you blink, you might miss it. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you don't know where it is, you won't know where to stop. The rest of this, get a, a Xerox copy from the young lady. Go out here and document a few more. Uh, I guess you guys is police vehicles or whatever. Then I hike on out. You too. So I'm finished filling this out. We'll be good to go. This situation highlights the need for police to perform their duties professionally, fairly, and with respect for citizens' rights. At the same time, citizens should know the law and file complaints promptly when their rights are violated to protect their rights and encourage accountability in law enforcement. Yeah. No ID, meaning you can't record around the Panama Police Department in Florida. But is that true? I haven't identified. No, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Follow suit. Holla at your partner. Because the chief said so. Holla, no, because I'm telling you to. Bye. No, you I'm, don't I'm, tell I'm, me anything. I bet you're going to go in that door. You have a nice I bet you're going to go in that door. According to a study by the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, incidents involving police preventing citizens from recording have increased significantly since 2010. The ACLU has recorded over 600 incidents where police infringed on citizens' rights as they filmed police actions and vehicles in public spaces. This is clearly wrong. Yet for some reason, these violations continue to happen every day. The incident below taking place in the pan 
Panama Police Department parking lot in Florida is a typical example. Thank you. Putting an article together. Huh? Putting an article together. A what? Out in the area. Putting a what? Uh, article. Okay. Um, I, I was inside City Hall. Um, mm -hmm. She said she she let the mayor get back with me, but um, I just left and came over to the police department. Mm -hmm. Just taking a okay. few photos of the license plates, the tags, the inside okay. of the cars. Okay. Just trying to see the upkeep of them. Okay. And do you I'll have any of, identification on I you? do not. I know who you are when you're out here casing my place. I don't know what you're doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just filming. That's all. Okay. But you say that, but I don't know what you're doing. Filming police cars right. and well, looking in the police cars and I tags I and stuff. Just for general public knowledge. That's all. Okay. I need to see some identification. I don't have any on me. Can okay. I have your name? Yeah, you step right over here in my car. I'll give you my name and I'll get yours. Okay? Well, who are you? I'm Sergeant Peavy. Is there an officer above you? The chief of police. Chief of police. Okay. You want to talk to him too? Uh, you might want to go get him. Okay. Because you're, yeah. you're above your... We've discussed police violating the Fourth Amendment when asking for IDs or identity verification from innocent citizens who haven't done anything illegal, hoping these mistakes will serve as lessons. However, the actions and words of the sergeant in this case further expose this serious violation. No, sir, I'm not. I can show okay. you, but I can tell you. Don't walk off. I'm, well, first, no, sir, right first off, I'm free to walk with... Reasonable suspicion of what crime? Which is why, of what okay, crime? I'm on a game Suspicion of what crime? You're avoiding that question because you know you're not dug yourself Reasonable in the hole. Reasonable suspicion. Of what it crime? It's not normal for some reason. Would can, you like me to explain it what, to you? Uh, no, see, you're digging yourself in the hole like now. Me to explain it's it not to normal. You. So you're telling me that every law that's written in the U.S. has to. Okay, then I'm you just answered you, your own question. Reasonable suspicion. Of what and crime? I'm going to of what you. crime? There's no crime here. You just don't like my camera. Would you, would you like me to explain? You're right. I'm gonna stop talking because I'm keeping what I'm doing. No, you're not going anywhere right now. You cannot. You cannot restrict my. You can't restrict the moment. You cannot. You're not under arrest. The Supreme Court. Okay. Detained until I find out. Detained for what crime? Tell me that. And after tell me and tell my attorney what crime you're detaining me for. Well, Let me hear. Your attorney got nothing to do with no, 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 he, no. between you and your attorney. He has it. No, no, no. Enough between you and my my attorney to tell you a damn thing. I once believed that the police chief understood and respected citizens' rights, especially as someone responsible for ensuring officers under him followed the law. Yet his actions here reveal the opposite. Rather than encourage legal compliance and protect citizens' rights, he posted vague access restriction signs and supported ID verification without any suspicion of a crime. This sends the wrong message, encouraging unnecessary interference in citizens' freedom. Hey, the chief. How you doing out here, brother? Can I talk to you, sir? Cause this officer here is irrational. I'm David, nice to meet you, brother. I'm doing a little filming out here in the parking lot. Not only has he threatened to detain me, and his suspicion is it's not normal. My question to him was, he said, sir, I've broken no, I've broken no law. I'm filming, I'll be on my way. He right. told me I was detained. What I want you to do is I would like for you to at least look at, Did I see what it says, authorized personnel only. And, in this parking lot or down there? It's this whole section because so this why is isn't where it? they drive through Hurricane Michael, actually. We haven't had a chance to put all the signs up. So until that sign is put up, there's no sign here for and you to abide by. the other question that yes, sir. prompted us to actually talk to you. Yes, sir. Out here in the public, there is no expectation of privacy. We can all you, understand Can that. you tell him that there, please? He I would like for you to tell him that I'm, on camera, What I please. want you to understand is that when we as law enforcement officers get calls from the general public mm -hmm. to go out and find out what's going on, you know, if a person's carrying a television at 10 o'clock at night down the street, that's not normal. That gives us the right to at least talk to the individual to, to determine if they are committing a crime or have committed. Let him but let can me I finish. talk, please? Because just, you've just, said more than finish. enough to answer all his questions. Okay. You said that y'all are obligated to come talk to find out there's a. Let's go back to you. Is there a crime being committed? No, I, I, but I want to talk to you. I want to talk to him first. Is there a crime being committed right now? So, what crime do you see? There's a camera, there's a man in a parking lot where's the crime we, we you won't answer that because you don't put your foot in regards to you yes sir. videotaping yes sir in a building yes sir okay so the question is and the concern is is that this place for a potential robbery okay <laughs> so that is how the call came out <laughs> you're now, joking right understand what is today's date those Today sweet ladies september the 12th the day the day after 9 11 and okay? my heart goes out to so every family that lost edgy so those sweet it. ladies so called you, you after i talked to them when you have an individual that comes in and videotapes and and tries to go into Authorized person. Well, I didn't walk. I okay. I asked him. I said, "Hey, uh, listen. I understand. I'll be down this hallway." She okay. said, "No, there's a but, sign there." I said, the "Yes, ma'am." To us to engage you in conversation okay. to find out if what you know what your intentions were. If you're just going around filming, don't okay, tell me that. Tell him that, please. He's he's aware of. No, no. Okay? I want he's, you to. He's listen, one of my employees. He's on my, your he's oath my and tell, listen. On All your right. oath and as long as I stay well within a publicly accessible area, please tell yeah. him that. Tell him. 
He's aware of it. I want you to he tell him, please. That, okay? Make me feel better. You're a public servant. Please then serve me. I want you to tell that, okay? So you won't correct your officer in public? I No, I'm you not won't saying correct that I'm your, not correcting Well, him. can you tell him, please? He knows because I just told him. I, to want, you. I want you to document like you. Everybody on YouTube knows the same thing. This isn't going to YouTube. You. This is going okay. to the local news media because that is that is unbelievable. Suspicion of me filming is enough to detain me, and you're going to allow him to tell me that? I asked yes. You know you didn't. I you am going to allow him to do stand. But was there a law we being... received a call. <laughs> By the general How you doing, public. buddy? I have the right to find so out we have the opportunity. Fourth Amendment to right to protect me from you. Okay. I have a Fourth Amendment right to protect me from idiots like you. Right. I have a right. Now, now, the truth. No, I got a first. I got a okay. First Amendment right that allows me freedom of speech. All right. So oh, it is on video, and the whole world's gonna see it. Okay. And I hope your family okay. doesn't watch. Y'all can go back inside. You have a wonderful day. I will. I promise I will do my best. Go ahead, follow suit, partner. Bye. You still going to follow suit? Holla okay. at your partner. Because the chief said so. Holla, no, because I'm telling you to. Bye. No, you I'm, don't tell I'm, me anything. I bet you're going to go in that okay. door. You have a nice I day. bet you're going to go in that door. You're harassing me now. I've done nothing wrong. Please there's, leave. There's no need. I'm not upset, there's but need. tell your sergeant no. to swallow his ego okay. here and just leave. No, looking you now, all right? To do what? We are de-escalating. And I'm trying you to de-escalate. No, 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 no. I'm de-escalating. it back up. How? I'm, no, no, no. So his ego is in effect. Over. And now your ego, okay, because you're telling me I'm belittled. Okay, it's over. All right, I'm, I'm done talking. You're okay. creating a scene out there. Thank you. I will try. I will. Please, y'all be safe out there, all right? Y'all be safe. Thank you, sir. I told you he's going to walk back inside. In conclusion, the lesson from this incident is that citizens need to know their rights and stand up for them when dealing with police. Always stay calm, ask officers to clarify their requests, and record if necessary to protect your personal freedoms from infringement. A lieutenant and sergeant are ready to act unprofessionally toward any citizen refusing to provide ID, even without a valid reason for their demand. I have every right to ask you for your ID, but you don't give me that, so it's tit for tat. But I have a, it's not a tit for tat. Okay. That's, that's not very, that's not very professional you of you. What was your name? That's not very professional, sir. What was your name? At the South Haven City Hall in Mississippi, a citizen came to exercise First Amendment rights peacefully. Everything went smoothly at first with a warm greeting from Deputy City Clerk Ashley. However, as good things sometimes don't last, as soon as he entered the nearby police department, he was immediately met with resistance from the officers, citing restrictive recording policies. Hello. Hi, ma'am. How are you? I'm How are you? How can I help you today? I'm here to do a uh, public records request. Okay. Clipboard. Thank you. You're welcome. Just want to get some cards yeah, too. Mm -hmm. This is the boss. This is the clerk. And then the others are just okay. Whoever you know, anybody else. Thanks, Ashley. Okay, great. So here is the city of. So it's just the uh, the first last name, title, and salary of all city employees. For the city of South Haven. Okay, yes. Okay. Sir. Business days to fill a public record request. Uh, we'll contact you once the request has been filled, and it's twenty dollars for the for the public record request. I think they've added additional dollar uh, for filing purposes, which I can pull that. I want to say I got a copy. I gotta go get my reason, but it is an extra dollar, and I don't think we've updated this application to read for that. I know they've. You know, before the board with this whole dollar that the state's requiring for a filing fee. Okay. So we went in, opted in, and I got $20, 25 cents a page, and there's a dollar for a filing fee. But I'll okay. take you with the amount total once I get done because I don't know how lengthy it's going to be. Even if I have to verify. Okay. Sometimes per sheet, you know. Okay. Um, if we have to still yeah, it's it strange. Out. Usually, usually when I do a public records request and if it's emailed and there's, because it's just being emailed, you know, mm -hmm. it's not really costing you anything. <laughs> That's true. Because uh, on here, because of the, it says CD digital, but some of the yeah. packages are older. Um, I think they do charge for emails as well. Okay. But I would verify. Alyssa, and skip back to me, yeah. Yeah, because Alyssa is savvy than I am, but sometimes when she's out, I do. I'm the follow, I'm the backup to it. Okay. That's why I know about that dollar because I saw it come through my email. Um, I'll get back with you. So we usually have seven business days. Today's is the 20th. So, the deadline. Okay. okay. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate yeah, you. You are very welcome. Appreciate your time great, today. Yes, sir. You have a great rest of the day. You too. All right, guys. Ashley was very nice. Let's take a look around the building here in the public leagues right across the street from the south haven city hall where we had a pleasant experience just now let's take a look around the publicly accessible areas of the parking lot and then we'll go inside so far so good no issues
Hey, how are you? Good. Um, no. No. Uh, your name is Sergeant. I'm, I'm Lieutenant Cook with the South Haven Police Department. And your name, Sergeant? Jeffy. Around like taking photos of people's uh, tags and in the cars and stuff. Yeah, that that's what I was doing. Is there a reason for that? Um, yeah, I'm a journalist. I was taking pictures of like the different license plates and stuff. So, taking personal license plates and government tags, or? Well, I don't know what's the difference. One doesn't. Well, one of them over here says law enforcement on it, so I don't know. What, you know what I mean? Are you from Mississippi, or? Oh, you, I'm not from the area. No. Where are you from? Don't want to answer that. Yeah, Who I'm do just, you work for? We're journalists. I'm independent, meaning that I work for myself. Huh. That's you have correct. ID on you? The type of form of identification? No, anything? no. Of picture on it? No, no, no. Nothing at all? No. Are you, do you have an ID out of a state? For us, when we get out and speak with somebody, we identify who they are, so that way we can add it to their, our CAD notes, so that way if something happens or something wants to follow. The First Amendment protects the right to free speech, including recording in public spaces without obstruction. Therefore, the lieutenant's view of filming as suspicious, leading to a demand for identity verification like an ID or driver's license, is incredibly unreasonable. Moreover, I was surprised to hear the lieutenant insist that their policy allowed them to check anyone's identity, when, in reality, police can only demand personal information with a legitimate reason or reasonable suspicion of a crime. I do have an ID. Okay. I don't have it on me, That's and fine. I don't make it a habit. It's my policy not to identify myself okay. unless I committed a crime, no. Or well, it's not necessarily you committed a crime. Again, it's when we make contact with the public, mm -hmm. we usually get a name, date of birth, some sort of identification for them, whether it be via citation if they've made a traffic stop or it's a baby hall. Yeah. So, hey, somebody's walking around out here looking suspicious, taking photos of people's cars, of their license plates, and that kind of stuff. Completely. Right. So that and, policy um, is, I'm going to ask you for your identification. So yeah. if and you don't have it on you, I need to get your name, date of birth. Yeah, my, my policy is I don't identify myself okay. unless you then suspect I'm you me. Stop recording. If you do that, then we'll take it up from the stuff from here. And why, we'll why, would, why would you stop me from recording? Because there's no need for you to be out here then. So you're saying, so you're saying because I won't identify... I'm asking you to leave is what I'm asking you. Because I won't identify myself to you, you're saying that I cannot engage in my constant... Well, no, I'm asking you to leave. Is what I'm asking. But I have every right to be here, no? Well, I, I, but I have a, it's not a tit for tat. Okay. That's that's not very that's not very professional of you. What was your name? That's not very professional, sir. What was your name? What's your name? Sir, I don't give my ID have unless you day. have you suspect me of committing a crime, sir. Right, you can have a good day. Well the crime would be I'm asking you and you're failing to obey that law. No, you re you need reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime that I'm committing or I'm about to commit in order to you demand just did by not giving me your I, 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 I know who he is. He's one of these okay. Just because I know the law, you, could, you know you who I am. All right. I understand where you're. I understand what you're asking me, sir. I not understand. Every here is for an officer. I Some understand of these are that. Public cars, the people that are up here that are following these are talking to us because something happened to them that involves the law enforcement needing to be there. So now you're taking a, a photo of a car that law enforcement outside of the contact that needs to be made with them. You guys run plates all day. Every any anybody who's and we parked have the in. Right to do that. If I'm in Walmart and I'm going inside I'm of Walmart, I can see the plates from anywhere I can. Sir, you're, I think you're being unreasonable. I'm not. I'm being very reasonable. You're trying to, what you're trying to do is violate my constitutional rights, I'm, and I'm not going to let that happen here today. There's no violation going here. You're going to post this too so I can watch it later? Oh, um, no, you'll find it. I guarantee you. You'll, 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 you'll be very much aware of okay. where it's, you guys can have a great day now. Thanks. Thank you. You took an oath to uphold the con. I'm one of those guys. One of those guys who knows the law. Do you see? How they try and make it seem that they can demand ID. And to somebody who doesn't know their rights, and this is exactly why I make these kinds of videos, for somebody who doesn't know their rights, they would have been intimidated by the lieutenant and the sergeant here, and they would have handed over their identification because it's a lawful order wrong. In conclusion, this situation clearly demonstrates that understanding the law can help protect citizens' legitimate rights. When citizens are well informed about their rights to free speech and filming in public, they can confidently confront unreasonable police demands and help prevent government agencies from abusing their authority. Thank you for watching today's video. The situations we've witnessed shed light on citizens' rights and how we sometimes must fight to protect our basic rights. Remember, each of us deserves respect and the ability to exercise our lawful rights. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to spread this important message. See you in the next video.